Hello Ample Players, Reverend here, and today I'm talking about Ample Guitar 2.0. Now the Ample Guitar 2.0 upgrade applies only to the acoustic guitars. Changes and improvements for the electric guitars are coming soon. Updates are free of charge for existing owners of Ample Guitar software, and you must install the 2.0 software from the complete installer. You can get your updates uh, at the My Ample Sound page at amplesound.net. Now, first up, we have a brand new articulation. You can now play slide guitar on all three acoustic instruments because slide samples have been added to those instruments and they are triggered by F sharp zero. VST3 format is now supported for Mac and Windows. Now, when you finish the installation, you'll find an icon on your desktop which, when you invoke it, invokes the host application. This is a brand new host application. It looks like this. This is the empty host, and these are all the Ample Guitars that you have installed. I'm going to take AGT2 to insert it into the host. I simply click it. So that's under plugin. That's how you switch out the guitars. Insert one into the host instead of another. And next up, we have the usual. MIDI device options, audio device options, and don't forget down here is where you change the tempo in standalone mode. So that's options, tempo. The keyboard has been added for those people who don't have a controller. You can now use your computer keys, computer keyboard keys, uh, as shown here, to insert MIDI notes. You can set the velocity, change the octave, and activate the Bender mod wheel. So that's the brand new uh, standalone host. Next up, GPX, the native format for Guitar Pro, is now a supported format in the tab file player. So I have a Demo 1 GPX loaded up here. I'm going to make some, actually I'm going to load it up in the tab file player. Let's see. There it is. Uh, you can see it change when you reload. I'm going to just demonstrate that. So I'm copying this measure and putting it there. Now when I save it, I just need to use save because GPX is a supported format. We don't have to use save as anymore. So once saved, I go back to my tab player, I click the reload button, and you can see that extra measure appear because the reload button saves you navigating to find the edited file. So that's it for GPX. Uh, GPX is now a supported format. Next up, I want to show you the new sampling engine. Now, there's huge, hugely improved memory usage and management because multiple instances of the instrument now only use a single copy of memory. I'm going to show you that. Right now, I have one AGT2 instance in the project. And in the task manager, you can see here 724. Now, when I add further instances, you will see it increase, but not by twofold, threefold, fourfold, and so on. So let me put three in, or four in. And then when we go back here, it's only slightly increased. It's not three or four fold or whatever. So this is, this is a great improvement because you can have strumming and picking and they're both using the same copy of memory. Okay, let's take a look at the all new strummer. You access the strummer from up here Make sure your toggle is on. Make sure you have the strum samples loaded. And existing users will notice there's been a little reorganization here. All the controls related to the response of the instrument are grouped into this section. We have the time it takes the pick to cross the strings, the time the strings remain ringing, the stroke volume, and down below three types of humanization. Each of these controls has a handy tool tip. In the chord section, select and detect are toggled using this button. And the first thing you see in detect mode, and you'll be in this mode, this is for keyboard players who are playing a controller or some other kind of keyboard. You'll see here a graphic display of the formulas for the chords that are possible and text above those columns. And for example, here I've got a first, third, and a fifth for a major C triad. But if I want to know the formulas for the other positions on the neck, I simply mouse over and the tool tip will tell me what else is possible. So that's new in detect mode. 
Also new, you can play C1 to B1 to change the root of a chord. So now you can have something like uh, D over F sharp instead of D over D, and you simply play F sharp. So you can play uh, C1 to B1 to change the root of a chord. You can also play C1 to B1 um, just for melody if you choose. So that's detect mode. Toggling back to select mode, we, ha we have two banks of chord slots now. Bank number one has slots 1 through 12. Bank number two accesses another 12 banks, 13 through 24, for a total of 12 slots for storing chords. When you want to save a whole chord bank, you get this new dialog. There's a, the path is displayed, there's a name for the project, place for the project name, author name, and when you see these little drop-down arrows, you know it's a, a drop-down list, and you can choose from category and choose from key. When you load an entire chord bank, you get this display. A single click on any one of these changes the entire chord bank and loads, I mean, ch loads it into here. You can sort by any of the column headings. And I'm going to choose default. That's a single click. And close the window. Okay, so that's the new chord section. Um, in the strum grid, at the moment, I have pattern 8 displayed. You can tell that because the button is lit up. This is my, this is my pattern bank. I can have 8 patterns loaded here for you know, any given uh, song. And you'll notice that there's no note on the 6th string because there's no note on the 6th string for this particular chord. But a new note has been added, transparent to the user, and consistent with the chord so that I can now play with this brand new auditioning button I can now play a G here this note here even though it's not marked on this string so that's just a, a little added plus I'm putting the pattern back to how it was this is the original So, single notes below the line in the strum grid, and they're always in sustain mode. You can't mute um, these single notes when they're part of a strum pattern. And then above, in the darker gray area, are all the strum articulations. Now with tooltips to remind you what they do. So here we have two types of downstroke, upstroke, and various types of muting as you go up here. In the strum grid, you can set the pattern note velocity. You can clear the grid out completely and make your own custom strum. Or you can copy from. Now when you copy from, let's say for example, I want to put uh, 6 onto 8. First of all, I choose my destination and then I choose which one I want to copy from. So now I have 6 and 8, exactly the same, and I can work on the copy. Okay, so that's the strum grid. Over here, along the top line, I can sync to the host tempo or turn that synchronization off. The host tempo is displayed here, and when I'm not in sync, it vanishes, and these two controls are disabled. If I want to save a pattern, I have a similar dialog box as saving a chord bank. Um, place for the name of it, the author, drop down lists for category, time signature, quantize, and you'll see here that my BPM matches the host BPM displayed here. Loading a pattern, uh, same thing here. I can narrow it down by category, time signature, or simply search, or I can sort by column. So lots of ways to find what you're looking for and load a pattern. The pattern that I have loaded is displayed here. The author, the category, time signature, resolution value, and the original BPM. Now under that, this is 
huge and it's new and it's wonderful, you can now audition the patterns right here in the strummer display. You can go next and you can go back. And even better than that, you can now drag a particular pattern right into your host. And there it is. Now when you when you drag the pattern into the host, you can see I've done that here. I've got four measures of it. You still need to add the notes that change the chord. And in this case, I'm starting with C, F, and G, and going back to C. And where do those notes come from? They come from this pattern grid. So for example, C, if you look at the end of the tooltip, you see I have to add a C1. And then when I go to F major, I'm going to have to add an F1 at the end of the tooltip there. Uh, for G, it's going to be G1, and then back to C. I've already done that. I've just added these notes in, so let me just play that for you. Okay, so that's the all-new strummer. Um, we have load, save, sync to tempo. This is the uh, set of eight in the pattern bank. We have the name of the currently loaded pattern, author category, time signature, resolution value, BPM, drag to host button, and then you can audition here and navigate forward and back. Here are the swing controls. This is the uh, quantize, so if I was to put that to there, you can now see what happens. So this is like having normal, half, and double. And then the time signature control. So that's it for the all-new strummer. Okay, let's take a look at settings. Up at the top here, as you can see, the presets are the default. But there are also a, there's also a save and load button here. Now, when you load a group of presets, uh, preset settings, you have all these to choose from. You can choose from something like long resonance, rich finger, and so on. So all these presets are new. You can also save a group of settings as a preset. And when you do, you'll find yourself in the same bucket, AGT2 Presets, and your file name will automatically be given this extension. So you can load and save groups of settings as a preset. There's the tuning. You can generate MIDI out with this feature. And of course, there's tooltip on everything. Um, the memory consumed is shown there. Now, Max Voices has been improved so that if you exceed Max Voices, the old voice will be killed. And if you want to know how many voices um, are being used so that you can set your Max Voices, you play the song and check out what happens down here. I'm just going to make sure I've got my strummer on, and I do. Okay, so it made it up to 61. So a setting of 80 is going to be fine for me. So Max Voices have been improved. Um, also, you can look at the uh, average load in this uh, VST performance meter, which is found under devices right here. And you can see what that does for each of your uh, various settings. You can set the uh, velocity sensitivity here. And just below that, we have a linear representation now of the various velocity layers. So 0 to 32 here, 32 to 64, all the way on up, except for 127, which is reserved for a string pop. And of course, these can be moved to suit your song. Next up, the bender range is specified in semitones. And I'm just going to play you that, if I can find a single note here. I'll make sure my strummer is off and go back to here. Okay, that's the bender. And a poly bender allows you to bend more than one string at once. So you can have an open string or a fretted note or, or two fretted strings. And uh, that's controlled by the poly bender switch on off. Now the mod range is controlling vibrato and that's on your mod wheel. And uh, I'll play that note again.
So I can manually control the vibrato by pushing the, pushing the mod wheel manually, or I can put the auto mod on, and that's new. Now what happens with auto mod is I simply push the wheel to the desired position and leave it there. Okay, that's it for the new settings in uh, AGT2, and actually that applies to the all three acoustic guitars, AGT2, AGL2, and AGM2. Now we come to the capo feature, found down here where the velocity sliders used to control the velocity layers. They used to be down here. It's been replaced by the capo control. Now the capo feature allows you to transpose on the fly. The original MIDI data is not affected and the fingering is retained. So I'm just going to make sure my strummer is off and I'm going to play this little piece for you with no capo applied. Now when I move the capo knob you can see the capo appear on the neck. and I can transpose on the fly. So you can quickly experiment with different keys. Great feature there, and I'm just gonna put the strummer back on and show you that it also works for strumming. Take the capo off to start with. And let's take it to the fifth fret. So it works for single notes, works for strums, and it also works, I'm going to take this off again, in the tab player. So first of all, this is the, the welcome piece in the tab player. Take it back to the beginning with this button and play it as, it's, as it is. Okay, and then put the capo, let's say, up to the fifth fret and go back to the tab file player from the beginning so that's it that is the uh, last feature I wanted to tell you about that's the capo feature in the new AGT 2.0 it works for single notes it works for strumming and it works in the tab file player on behalf of Ample Sound thanks for watching <laughs>